¿Qué pasa to the pack? It is pack here. You know, I thought that this trade deadline was gonna get very boring, but Kyrie Irving made sure to change that. Kyrie Irving gets traded to the Dallas Mavericks, demanding a trade from the Nets, threatening that if he's not traded, he would not re-sign it and they would lose him for nothing. The Nets obviously had to react and have made a trade. I'm gonna go over the trade, what each team got in NBA 2K23, and see, in my opinion, who wins a trade and who loses it. Let's get it, main. Also, subscribe. Let's go. Let's start off with obviously the team that's gonna be benefiting the most out of this, the Dallas Mavericks. Now with already Luka Doncic 97 overall on their team, they add Kyrie Irving 90 overall. They have him as a shooting guard. This would basically give Luka Doncic that number two star that is absolutely needed if you want to win NBA championships. The Dallas Mavericks were a good team in the NBA, in the West specifically, but they were clearly missing that extra piece. They thought Christian Wood would be that piece, but when they lose Jalen Brunson at the same time, they essentially flipped those players and they didn't really get better while the rest of the West and East got better. But when you make a trade like this, adding Kyrie Irving to your team, yes, you lost a couple players, but we'll talk about who they are in a second. This is absolutely a W for the Dallas Mavericks and what Luka Doncic needs in order for them to win. Ignore the logistics of the trade, both players are dog ball dominant players, so you don't really know how this is going to work out with the Mavericks. But clearly, if you look at it from a step back, you get two players that can shoot, two players that can play, make two players that can create for themselves. This is absolutely going to be a good thing for the Mavericks, more than a bad thing. Uh, there's again like defense is a couple issues I see here, especially because they lost Dorian Finney Smith. There's like no defense on the team now, but with Christian Wood as your center, you have so many threats you should be able to succeed with this roster. Look, if you look at the starting lineup, it's uh, this is a starting lineup that I'm predicting they're gonna do, but they could do a lot of things. Although Luka Doncic is now a point guard, I have a feeling they're gonna move him at the small forward position. He's still gonna bring the ball to the court sometimes, but with Kyrie Irving on your team, I can't see him playing point guard and Luka Doncic playing point guard at the same time. What they could do is maybe put Kyrie Irving at shooting guard and then Luka at point guard. But then what happens with Tim Hardaway Jr.? He's not tall enough to be a small forward. This is what I think they're going to do. You put Kyrie at the point guard, Tim Hardaway Jr. at the shooting guard, Luka Doncic at the small forward. You still have Christian Wood at power forward and Dwight Powell at center. This helps defensively because they're going to make them a little bigger of a team. They're still not going to be great defensively, but their offense is going to be so aggressive and so threatening that it's not really going to matter. You could do a couple other things, especially if Maxi Cleaver comes back. Maybe you could put Luka Doncic at the small forward, the shooting guard position, and maybe you could like do something else with that. But yeah, there's definitely a lot of options. I know obviously other people are screaming at the screen saying Luka at point guard, Kyrie at shooting guard, Tim Hardaway Jr. at small forward. I'm sure you could do that. Maybe the, the Mavericks are going to do that, but I think it makes way more sense to put size-wise do this, right? I think this is a good thing a good thing for the Mavericks. Their depth is pretty atrocious, though. JaVel McGee, Maxi Kleber, Josh Green, Reggie Bullock. It's not the best backup players, and everybody else is pretty atrocious on this team. I'm not going to act like the Mavericks have a lot of depth or a lot of defense, but in terms of scoring and the ability to win a championship, their odds are gotten way better with this trade adding Kyrie Irving to the team than before. But I got to be honest, Kyrie Irving, man, I don't know what he's thinking. They were The Nets were the second seed in the East just a month ago. Kyrie Irving was, I was praising him because I was like, bro, he's back to taking basketball seriously. He's back to stop messing around and being a problem. And yet here he goes again, demanding a trade, forcing teams to change. I mean, I think this is a good thing for the Mavericks. I think the Mavericks get a positive thing out of this. They lose Dorian Finney-Smith. They also lose Spencer Dinwiddie. So the depth is, is pretty hit pretty hard. But I think it doesn't matter if you have Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic. I mean, you have the MVP of the NBA in debate, obviously. With Kyrie Irving, who's an extremely efficient point guard that can create shots, I don't know who's going to be able to guard both players at the same time. It's going to be an offensive nightmare for any team to play against them, but it's the defense that wins championships, and I don't know if this team is built defensively to succeed in that way. But Kyrie Irving isn't a bad defender. Tim Hardaway Jr. is. Luka Doncic is not very good defensively. But Christian Wood and Dwight Powell should be able to do it. So it all depends on if the team can play good defense rather than the individual players. And they could have a chance. We're going to have to wait and see how it works out for the Mavericks. But now we're going to have to look at the Brooklyn Nets. Assuming healthy, assuming Kevin Durant comes back healthy this season. 
This is your brand new lineup of Kevin Durant at your best player, Nicholas Claxton as a Defense Player of the Year candidate. You have now Spencer Dinwiddie back with Brooklyn. You have Ben Simmons still around the 80 overall, one of the better defenders of basketball. TJ Warren, who has good and bad games. Seth Curry, who's been playing a little better lately. Dorian Finney-Smith, who's a good defender. You know, good shooter Joe Harris. You have Patty Mills playing good right now. You have also Cam Thomas, who's an amazing player. And Watanabe, who's been good. So you do have some things here. And you still have Kevin Durant with a bunch of 80 overall players. In fact, if you look at the starting lineup, uh, this projected starting lineup, you have a bunch of 80 overall players of Ben Simmons at point guard, Spencer Dinwiddie at shooting guard, TJ Warren at small forward, Kevin Durant at power forward, and Claxton at center. Everyone on the starting lineup is an 80 overall and above, and this is a very good defensive team while also having scores like Spencer Dinwiddie, Kevin Durant, and TJ Warren. So in theory, Kevin Durant still has a pretty good roster here, but the Nets are terrified that Kevin Durant is going to leave the team at the end of the season. And if that's the case, then yes, without Kevin Durant on this team, it's not looking very good anymore, is it? So you're going to have to trade Kevin Durant if he's starting to leave. But the thing is, it's such an awkward situation because, like, is he going to leave or not? Does he want to get traded or not? We don't officially know. Assuming he stays, do I think the Nets still have a chance of being good? I don't know. The, th the big thing here is you do still have Cam Thomas. And Cam Thomas is looking like he's going to be very good as long as it gets the actual playing time, right? Utah Watanabe is a good shooter. You're, so your depth is very good. You have defensive players, you have scorers, with Seth Curry and Dorian Finney-Smith. You have a center that can play great defense. You have Kevin Durant, who's an MVP candidate. You have TJ Warren, who can we know can score when playing well. We have Spencer Dinwiddie, we, who also know can score when playing well. The big question mark is Ben Simmons. Is Can Ben Simmons be more of an offensive threat? We know that's not the case. He does not shoot the basketball. He's having zero point games. I know he's a good defender. I know a lot of people preach about how good of a defensive player he is, and I respect people's thoughts on that. But, you know, when you're just a playmaker who plays defense, you're not a threat offensively, and you become a liability. When you're not really doing anything to, to threaten driving the basket, threaten shooting the ball, people are not afraid of Ben Simmons, and it's not really helping the team. Again, this team is definitely filled out for shooters, and, and you can definitely make some things happen with Ben Simmons, but I don't know, man. From what I'm looking at here, I can't see Kevin Durant wanting to stay when you don't have a clear number two scoring option. This is what you could do if you're the Brooklyn Nets. You can do Ben Simmons at the small forward position, and then TJ Warren is flipped with Cam Thomas. Now, what this does is that now you have a clear TJ Warren off the bench kind of score. You have Cam Thomas, a point guard that we know can get crazy, crazy good offensively. We know Spencer Dinwiddie can be good offensively. And you're looking at a little more aggressive lineup offensively. You just have to hope that Cam Thomas right now becomes that guy offensively, and who knows, right? But that thing is, that's, that's a gamble. You don't know if that's going to work. And you don't even know if Kevin Durant wants to be there anymore. The thing is, the, the Nets are in so many weird, awkward positions where they have to make so many gambles that I just don't know if this is going to work out for the Brooklyn Nets. What I'm going to do is simulate an NBA season with these new teams just to see what 2K thing is going to happen, and I'll stop it from there. Well, as you can imagine, Luka Doncic wants MVP, even with Kyrie Irving on his team, averaging a super triple-double. If you look at the NBA standings, the Nets actually don't even make the play-in tournament. They are the 11th seed. So according to 2K, this is a terrible situation for the Brooklyn Nets. As for the Western Conference, the Dallas Mavericks end up with the best record in the NBA, tied with the Boston Celtics. So at least in terms of simulation in 2K theory, they do believe that the Dallas Mavericks are going to end up being the best team in the NBA with the best chance in the West, assuming healthy. They think that Spencer Dinwiddie will average 15 points per game, but that's not going to be enough for Kevin Durant's 31 points, and like no one else is really going to be doing good offensively. While the Mavericks have Kyrie and Luka Doncic putting up video game numbers, while Christian Woods having a good season as well, it's you can understand why it's going to be a good season for the Mavericks now with Kyrie Irving because of the offensive terror that these two are bringing. Let's simulate the playoffs real quick just to see if they make the NBA Finals and that's it. So already according to 2K, they win the Western Conference Finals. Luka gets almost 40 points per game in the Western Conference Finals. And it's a Celtics Mavericks NBA Finals according to NBA 2K23. Let's simulate through the round and we get a seven game series where the Celtics win over the Mavericks. Look, Tatum drops 44 points per game in that series. But it goes seven games. That is, listen, bro. If you are the Dallas Mavericks, 
That is what you want. You just want a shot now. You don't want to lose Luka Doncic because the team is struggling. If you can make the NBA Finals and go seven games against the best team in the NBA, that's a good thing. I think the Mavericks made a good decision. Now, is there a fear that Kyrie Irving can leave at any moment or for the smallest reason ever, Kyrie Irving becomes a problem? Yeah, that's an issue. But if, there, if that chance, that opportunity is to win an NBA championship, you take it. You absolutely take it if you're the Dallas Mavericks. What do you guys think? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like this channel, please give it a sub. I'll see you guys next time.